Hey everyone, uh, welcome once again to another Thursday uh, night teaching with me, Pastor Joseph Kahugo Katoto. And uh, apologies for starting late, I uh, had a bit of a technical issue here and there. Uh, so last week uh, I managed to do an intro on telepathic uh, unity and telepathy and I talked a little bit about that as I was coming to uh, the conclusion of uh, the unity consciousness which I will also be referring to a couple of times in this uh, particular teaching because all of these realities are just uh, they're integrated into one thing you cannot talk about unity consciousness and not talk about telepathy and you can also not talk about telepathy and not talk about unity consciousness or unity mind and so forth because they are they're integrated they're just one one reality one holistic reality that is connected so unity consciousness is an aspect of uh, telepathy uh, because when we are integrated into the being of God and into the divine nature as the Bible says that he that is one with the Lord is one spirit with him and when we speak about spirit we're talking about consciousness so he that is one with the Lord is one consciousness with God and also the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ that we have the mind of Christ now having the mind of Christ uh, is not just in relation to the nature of the mind of Christ but also in relation to the realities of the mind of Christ and the realities in the mind of Christ because you have the realities that are in the mind and that the realities in the mind also contains realities within them because every reality contains other realities every reality contains other realities so every reality comes with possible realities and every manifestation every cognitive manifestation also comes with, comes uh, attached with other manifestations uh, that's why we follow specific trains of thought when you pursue a specific thought that is uh, when you integrate uh, when you uh, when you now you're investigating a specific thought and you're considering something specific which has to do with meditation uh, you enter into the realities of that specific thought uh, you enter into that and one of the ways to actually ascend into Christ consciousness is by meditating uh, on is by meditating on Christ realities what the Bible says you are in Christ and when you begin to meditate on the Christ realities that is the realities of what you are within the being of Christ uh, you begin to restructure your consciousness and you also begin to heal uh, your quantum dimension your quantum dimension begins to help uh, because when we speak about the restructuring of the consciousness that comes hand in hand with quantum healing and quantum recreation which is something that we're going to look at at a different time and when we speak about quantum healing and quantum recreation uh, we are also definitely also speaking about the restructuring of the mind because mind is energy so we're also talking about the restructuring of the mind which has to do with the cleansing uh, of the cognitive energy the cleansing of the cognitive energy uh, and also the cleansing of the light that is our consciousness so these are some of the things that I've written about uh, in uh, book number 21 of the reality series that's uh, that's actually called um, quantum healing and quantum recreation we get to talk about that and we also get to see how to create our quantum dimension because when the Bible says that anyone that is in Christ is one with Christ Christ is a quantum reality and when we speak about God we're speaking about a quantum reality and when you are with Christ and his spirit is one with your spirit and his mind is one with your mind that means that Christ is your quantum dimension Christ is your quantum dimension your quantum dimension is Christ so in other words you are you are a manifestation of the body of Christ you are a, mani a manifestation of the body of Christ and you are an expression of the being that is Christ because your quantum dimension and the quantum dimension of Christ are one they're in unity unity with God has to do with um, it has to do with the us that has to do with our quantum dimension and our, our quantum reality which also has to do with frequency that our frequencies vibrate with the frequency and in the frequency of divinity that means that our frequencies though they retain their distinction uh, they come into resonance with the frequency of divinity because when we speak about God we're speaking about energy we're speaking about sound uh, we are speaking about our uh, vibration we are speaking about um, breath you know we're speaking about breath uh, and we are also definitely definitely speaking about also energy so when we speak about God that's what we're talking about and that is the reality of God and we're also speaking about light that is the reality of the being of God so God's light is our light his energy is our energy his vibration is our vibration so some some of the things that we meditate on I, I've actually done um, a meditation on quantum 
quantum healing and quantum recreation you can check it out on my youtube channel uh it's available you can also check it out on uh, my page integrated reads is also available there and it's, it's it's a mantra and a meditation something that you can practice the bible says that spiritual exercise is of great gain compared to physical is of great gain compared to physical why because spiritual exercise leans towards eternity spiritual exercise leads towards eternity it leans towards eternity and towards actualizing uh, the realities of Christ because as I said last week there is the Christ you have entered into and there's the Christ you become within the Christ you have entered into so that has to do with the process of ascension that we begin to ascend in Christ and we ascend to the fullness of Christ as scripture says that we might come to the fullness of Christ that means that there is a process of ascension within the being of Christ so when the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ and the Bible says we have the mind of Christ and that Christ resides in us which means that humanity is humanity is there is also a realm of God that God resides within humanity so anyone that is in Christ and Christ is in them that means that that specific and that particular person is a realm of God and that the only place in the entire physical realm where God can rest is in man so when we speak about humanity humanity is the realm of God humanity is the realm of God you are a realm of God you are a realm of God where God takes rest in where God resides and where God exists you are a realm of God so that has to do with humanity so that means that when Christ is in you that means that God is in you and God has rested in you that means you are the tabernacle that is called that is called Christ because Christ is the tabernacle of God Christ is the tabernacle of God God resides in the being of Christ so when we speak about Christ consciousness we speak about um, Christ's mind, the mind of Christ, uh, we are simply speaking about the realities of the tabernacle of God that is the human body, that is the body of Christ. Because we are living conscious members of the body of Christ. The body of Christ has conscious members and we are the living conscious members of the body of Christ. So we are integrated into the consciousness of God and we are integrated into the mind of God in the person of Christ. Because Christ is the unity consciousness. Christ is unity mind. And when we speak about Christ also, uh, we're also speaking about uh, a, a telepathic unity. Because Christ is the telepathic unity between divinity and humanity. Because Christ is humanity, uh, Christ is humanity in divinity and divinity in humanity. And that is what it means to be a Christian. So when we speak about Christ, we're also speaking about a telepathic unity. Because all of us consciously, uh, when we speak about the members of the body of Christ, we're speaking about conscious living beings so when we that have mind and that have consciousness that is awareness so within the mind of Christ we are in a telepathic unity with the being of God it means that our minds are synchronized within the mind of God in the mind of God through the person of Christ so we are in a telepathic unity with the mind of God through Christ in Christ who is the telepathic unity between divinity and humanity so that means that when God speaks to us God speaks to us telepathically God speaks to us telepathically he doesn't because he speaks from within us and we are able to hear him in us we're able to hear him in us so God speaks to us telepathically and each and every single one of us we have a telepathic channel with God we have a telepathic channel with God within the being of Christ within the telepathic unity that is Christ uh, there are different specific channels. There is my channel with God. There is your channel with God. And God speaks through that specific channel. And even when someone is not saved, God is able to project. God is able to project his message to the person uh, now through telepathy. is able to project the message through telepathy. So when we speak about telepathy, that has to do with uh, speaking uh, without using mouth, without using your mouth. It's just speaking uh, with the mind and in the mind by developing a telepathic channel and this telepathic channel now needs to be strengthened we have different strengths in different telepathic channels within the body of Christ and within the respective members of the body of Christ and that has to do with discernment you cannot speak about telepathy and strengthening a telepathic channel without speaking about discernment why because there is your inner voice and there is the inner voice of God uh, there is your inner voice and there is the voice of God so when God speaks he speaks from within you but we need to come into a place Place where we are able to discern the frequency of God, to discern when God is speaking. I was having a conversation with uh, one of the young men that I'm 
working with and I'm mentoring today, and he was speaking about how God would speak to him, but he would think that it's just his own thoughts. So God was speaking to him telepathically, but he thought it was his own thoughts because he had not come to that place yet of discernment. His discernment in relation to the frequency of God was something that was developing. So we need to consistently uh, develop our discernment towards the voice of God. And discernment has to do also with the gift. There is a gift that comes from the being of the Holy Spirit where we are able to discern frequencies, where we can discern our own frequency and we can discern the frequency of God. And when we begin to discern the frequency of God, and now our telepathic channel begins to be strengthened. That means that our telepathic channel now enters into higher dimensions and even our consciousness in terms of the discernment of the voice of God uh, enters into a higher consciousness. So discernment also aids in entering into a higher dimensions of consciousness within the being of God. That when we're interacting with the person of God, we need the spirit of discernment so that we can learn to discern the voice of God. So that when God gives us a message and gives us a direction, we don't end up thinking that, you know what, this is just me. But it is the being of God that is speaking so that we can be able to carry out that particular instruction from the being of God. Most of the time we will disobey God because of lack of discernment. Most of the time we will disobey God because of lack of discernment. I've had instances uh, in the past where God has spoken to me, but I didn't know that it was God. There was failure in discerning. And because I could not discern that this was God, I ended up being disobedient. And later on, when God told me ABCD was going to happen, and that I was supposed to do one, two, three things so that it doesn't happen, I didn't end up doing what God had told me to do. And as a result of that, what God wanted and what God wanted to protect me from actually ended up happening. Why? Because I failed to discern the voice of God. And it's a process. It's a process. We need patience when it comes to discerning the voice of God. It's not something that happens just uh, uh, automatically. It's something that we consistently come into growth of. We consistently come into the reality of knowing the voice of God and getting accustomed with the voice of God and coming to a place where within the being of God, we are able to discern our voice or our frequency and the frequency or the voice of God that when he's speaking we get to know this is God and it is God that is speaking to me. That's why you find in the book of Job it is written that God speaks in one way yet in another but man does not hear it but when man lays his head to sleep then God opens his understanding and he he gets to know. So sometimes God will be speaking throughout the day. He'll be saying things to us. And when he's speaking to us, we think it's ourselves. You know, that's, that's just me. These are just things that I'm saying to myself. But when we lay, we lay our heads to, to sleep, now he speaks in a dream. And even when God is speaking through the dreams now, it is also through that telepathic channel that exists between us and him because he's projecting messages. Uh, he's broadcasting messages through this telepathic channel that exists between us and God. And he's broadcasting messages to us, dreams, symbols that come in, uh, in symbols and we get to a place where now we begin to decipher what God is saying. And when we come into a place where we are able to decipher what God is saying, we come into uh, a place where we are able to understand that this is the message. So there are times that God will speak in a dream because we've not we've not discerned what he was saying through the day. We've not discerned what he was saying through the day. So it's very important for us to uh, consciously practice the presence of God. There's something like that practicing the presence of God that means that we begin to interact with the being and with the person of God on a personal level on a personal level God becomes personal when we make him personal he's a personal God he's not just the God of uh, Pastor Joseph he's not just the God of uh, Brian he's not just the God of so and so he is your God he is your God and the fact that he is your God, that means that he wants a personal relationship with you. That's why the Bible says, whosoever believes, whosoever believes. So God narrows it down to the individual. God narrows it down to the individual. And so it's a relationship that is very personal. So we need to take God very personally. You know, taking our relationship with God personally. Still, uh, practicing the presence of God. You know, I talked about last week, I talked about uh, having conversations with God where you're expressing yourself to God and you're telling God about how your day was and so forth. Also talked about meditation, you know, when it comes to meditation and contemplation. Uh, because the written word of God, when we talk about the word of God, the word of God is... Uh, the written expression of the frequency of God. So when we begin 
begin to meditate on the word of God, we come into a place where our telepathic channel with God is strengthened, is enhanced, and we come into higher dimensions of consciousness within the being of God through now meditation and contemplation because we are contemplating at the written frequency of God, which in essence means that we are engaging the frequency of God. And when we begin to engage the frequency of God, there are realities of God that are assimilated into our system. And one of those realities is the discernment of the frequency and the voice of God. I usually use this particular example. It's like uh, me and my mom. I know my mom's voice. I don't have to see her to know that it's her, that, uh, that that's my mom talking. Because I've been in her presence. I've spent time in her presence. I've interacted with her. She can be outside the house and she calls me, Joseph, I will hear and I will know that is my mom. I am able to discern the frequency of my mom because I have had constant association with my mom. That means that there has been a practice of the presence of my mom by sitting with my mom, by conversing with my mom, which means that I have developed that particular discernment same way when we come into the presence of God we come into the presence of God in prayer we come to the presence of God with meditation with contemplation studying the Word of God and so forth it, that enhances our telepathic channel that when God speaks we are able to hear him and we are able to know this is the voice of God and it is not my own voice this is the voice of God and it's not my own voice so that happens within the telepathic unity where when we speak about the body of Christ we're speaking about a telepathic unity because all of us are connected to God telepathically so there are various telepathic channels within the being of God and these various telepathic channels within the being of God are very specific and so there are different kinds of telepathic channels within the being of God and they have a varying degrees of strength. Let me say that they have varying degrees degrees of strength. When I speak about strength, uh, that has to do with uh, discernment, that has to do with the discernment that uh, the person has in relation to discerning the voice and the will of God and knowing that this is God speaking. It's not me, it is God speaking. God is saying this and God is saying that. You know, uh, when it comes to that, even discerning that the dream that I'm having, it's a dream from God. It's not a dream from another place. It's not a dream from the kingdom of darkness, but it is the dream of God. It is God projecting his message, projecting his mind, projecting his consciousness uh, into my consciousness and into my mind through this, uh, through my telepathic channel with him so that I can come to an understanding and a knowledge of his will so that I can execute that which God desires of me. So that has to do with telepathic channel. When we come to a place where we are able to discern and now in within our uh, very specific telepathic channels with God, there are places where we reach with God and scripture says this of Christ, that Jesus knew the thoughts of men. He knew the thoughts of men. He knew what men were thinking. How did he know what men were thinking? That he knew their hearts and he knew their thoughts. He knew their hearts and he knew their thoughts because God knows and searches our hearts telepathically. That means that in terms of God, God knows my thoughts because there is that telepathic unity between me and God. And besides God knowing my thoughts, he has known them before the beginning of time. So when we also speak about now... Uh, Christ getting to know the thoughts of men. It was through the telepathic channel between Christ the man and uh, God the Father, that is eternity, that that God projected uh, the various thoughts of different men into the telepathic channel of God, and into the telepathic channel of Christ. And that happens. That happens. There are times that uh, God will reveal the thoughts of men to me. Tell me, so and so is thinking like this. So and so is thinking like this. I had uh, an, um, an encounter like that a while ago. I was I was busy. I was praying. I was just doing this and doing that in prayer. And I was also meditating. And the Spirit of God ministered to me. I had a thought. It was not my thought. It was a person's thought that God was revealing to me. And I spoke to that person later on. And I told them, are you thinking this and this, isn't it? And they're like, yes, uh, you've peaked and so forth. Because they are prophetic. And people that are prophetic, oftentimes or not, they are sent to this dimension uh, where they are able to pick up on the thoughts of people telepathically, where they are able to pick up the thoughts of people, where they are able to know so and so is thinking like this, so and so is thinking like that. And I have a friend who 
uh, who is prophetic and uh, encounters that God God uses him in that specific way. That's why the Bible speaks about the prophetic in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, I think 13 or 12, there only talks about the prophetic and he says that if there is a prophet and men come and believers are gathered with the believers, that their thoughts will be revealed, their hearts, the thoughts of their hearts will be revealed. The thoughts of their hearts will be revealed. Now the thoughts of their hearts are revealed telepathically. That the being of God transmigrates the thoughts of so and so into the telepathic channel that he has with a specific individual. And the specific individual becomes aware of the thoughts of other people. Now that may, that has to do also with our super consciousness, which is Christ consciousness. That in Christ consciousness, we come into the reality of telepathy within the telepathic unity that we exist in within the being of God. Now, now that means that our frequency must be in resonance with the frequency of God, as I said in the beginning, so that we can come to a place where we are able to operate from telepathy, where we are able to uh, pick up on the thoughts of people and respond on the thoughts of people and expose the thoughts of men and expose the thoughts of men. You know, uh, the times I will be chilling with friends and God would reveal their thoughts. Their thoughts would just come. Their thoughts would just come. And I would tell them, hey, you're thinking this and this. This is this and this is what you're thinking. You know why? Because God reveals the deep things of the heart. Why? The Spirit of God searches the deep things. He knows the deep things. He knows the realities of our hearts. He is the Lord God Almighty that knows all and sees all and transmigrates all of these realities through the telepathic channel that we have. Even in matters of studying the Word of God and seeing the realities within the Word but when the Bible talks about the Spirit, uh, that the Spirit is the teacher, when the Bible speaks about in the book of Isaiah, that the Lord God Almighty, He will teach you. He teaches us telepathically through that telepathic channel that we have with Him. That's the place where God now begins to teach us. That's where oh, the place where God now begins to enlighten our understanding, where He begins to expand our consciousness so that we can come into the maturity of the consciousness of Christ, the fullness of Christ, so that we can also come into the fullness of the mind of Christ, to a place where we are able to function like the being of Christ, where we are able to make manifest the realities of the person and the being of God through Christ, in Christ, from Christ, by Christ, that the nature of God, which the Bible says we are partakers of the divine nature, and if you are partakers of the divine nature, then consequently also, we are not just partakers of the divine nature, but we are also called to function within the parameters of the divine nature of God, that as God God functions so we function that we come to a place where we mirror the functionality of God, we reverberate the functionality of God, and we manifest the the nature of God, not only in terms of the virtues that are written in Scripture, in terms of our kindness and so forth and etc in terms of love and also in terms of where scripture says that you are the righteousness of Christ that has to do with what we are in him but there is now the manifestation of the operation of the nature of God that we also come into a place of the manifestation of the operations of the nature of God so we begin to reveal the Lord God as he is we begin to reveal him as he is so that people can see and know that we serve the one and true God because it is in Christ that divinity is revealed. And Christ is humanity in divinity and divinity in humanity. That is what Christianity is. That is what Christianity is. It is a nature and it is the nature of the living and the divine God, the one and the true God. And in him we make him manifest. In him, we make him manifest. So even as we interact with God, we interact with God uh, in meditation, we interact with God in contemplation, in chewing on the word of God, in um, engaging uh, the written expression of the frequency of God so that we can come to a place now of uh, ascension within the being of God, coming into a place of uh, higher dimensions of consciousness and higher dimensions of understanding within the being of God as we ascend into the being of Christ and into the fullness of the maturity of Christ so that we can reveal uh, the so that uh, God can be revealed through us and in us so that God can be revealed through us and in us for the glory and the honor of his name. So as we meditate, our telepathic channel with God now is strengthened. Our discernment is heightened. We, 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 we discern God more and more and we come to a place where now we are able to distinguish between our inner voice and the frequency of God and the voice of God means our frequencies and the frequency of God. We are able to discern between the two and we are able to administer 
the mind and the counsel of God. So through meditation, through contemplation, through prayer, and also through waiting, through waiting on the Lord, just waiting on the Lord. It is very significant to learn to wait on the Lord. But even in meditation, you just learn to wait on the Lord. While you are sitting, you're just waiting on the Lord. You're waiting on the Lord. You see, waiting is not something that, uh, it's not... Uh, it's not lack of action. It carries an action. And we wait in the presence of God. So when we begin to wait in the presence of God, we're engaging the frequency of God because we are waiting on God. That means that we are engaging the frequency and the person of God. And as we engage the frequency and the person of God, that means that uh, we're engaging the frequency of God. And as we engage, we will come into the realities of God. We'll come into the realities of God. It's like waiting to be served. You're sitting somewhere and you're waiting to be served. And your attention, your consciousness, and your mind, are they channeled towards that specific reality of being served by that person that you're waiting on. So as we are seated and we are waiting on the Lord, we're waiting on the Lord in silence. In silence. Silence is profound it's just amazing you know there are times god will speak to me in silence so i'll just go i will chill i will wait on the lord i'll just wait on the lord and he will speak and he will speak he will reveal things to me he will reveal mysteries to me i'll have visions i'll have i'll have visions i'll hear his sound he say this and he said that uh, because i'm waiting you know practicing the presence of god includes waiting and as we wait on the lord we strengthen that telepathic channel uh, between us and God, that specific telepathic channel within the telepathic unity that is the being of Christ. It is strengthened within the being of God. So even when we speak about angels and communication with, between angels, uh, communication between God and angels, communication between angels and angels, communication between angels and humanity, they also communicate telepathically. At uh, one time we We've been gathered in a place of prayer and we were praying and we were seeking the face of God uh, with a couple of young people and I had I had I had a voice tell me we are here and we've come to minister to you. And I thought, you know what, this is just my own stuff. We, you know, just we and I'm like, no, God says I am and as I say we and all that. So I began reasoning out. I began uh, contending with this voice in my head and that this is not God, this is not God and all that stuff. And yes, it wasn't God. It was actually angels, and the angels began, um, they told me that, and I came to a place where now, as you continue to pray, God told me, you know what, it's angels are here, and they've come to minister to you, and so forth, and we continued to pray, and one of the young men that we were praying with uh, said, one of us has been given a message, what's the message? And I said it, and I said, uh, angels, I've had angels, they've spoken to me, and they've said that they've come to minister, they've come to minister to us. And one of the young ladies that was there was prophetic and is very prophetic in terms of um, uh, seeing angels, interacting with angels and so forth. She's a seer. said, yeah, that's true. They're here. And we continued, we continued to pray and indeed they ministered. I've had encounters with them uh, where they come. Most of the time they'll come, they'll do whatever they're doing and they'll leave. And sometimes I wonder, hey, why are you not talking and so forth? But this one time they spoke to me and it wasn't... It wasn't through the mouth, it was telepathically that they developed, there was the developing of a telepathic channel within the telepathic unity that is Christ. And there was a message that was broadcasted into me, into my mind, into my consciousness. And I became aware, you know what, angels are here and they've come to do etc. and etc. Because even God in relation to communicating with angels is telepathically, uh, in relation with uh, communicating even uh, between angels and so forth, they commune uh, telepathically and it is very much possible uh, to be in a telepathic connection with another fellow human being. And these are realities that are contained in the fullness of the body of Christ in the fullness of the reality of the person of Christ where we come into a place where we're able to develop telepathic channel with each other that means we are able to come into a telepathic unity uh, within a telepathic within the telepathic unity that is the being of Christ because this telepathic unity of the body of Christ happens within the being of Christ so we are able to come into that place of telepathic unity developing human telepathic channels are uh, for communication and not only for communication but developing telepathic channels are uh, also because of coming into the knowledge of a specific person, seeing into the realities of the person, 
seeing into the consciousness of the person, coming into an awareness of the consciousness of the person. So when we also speak about telepathy, that has to do with coming into uh, an awareness, into a knowledge of the tele of the con the structure of a person's consciousness and the structure of a person's mind. Your consciousness structures your mind. So when there is a telepathic channel, uh, there is the knowing coming into. So a telepathic channel is coming into seeing into the person. Uh, it is intimacy where there is a telepathic channel it has to do with intimacy that means that seeing into the living code of the person because the structure of our consciousness is the code of our life and it's the code of our manifestation we manifest from how our consciousness is structured so when there is that telepathic channel uh, there is seeing into the person uh, and in order to see into the person the person must be willing for you uh, must be willing to allow you to see into them because telepathic channels are developed through the world they're developed through the world so between humanity and humanity there is that specific um uh there is a telepathic channel that is developed but is developed through the will and these are realities that are contained within the being of christ and realities that have to do with the uh, ascension into higher dimensions of consciousness within the being of christ that we can actually develop these channels and we communicate telepathically and we also see into the realities of the person in the person and we come into a place where we begin to know as they are known. That's why Paul says that then I will know as I am known. I will know as I am, as I am known. Now, it's not just that he will, that we will know ourselves as we are known, but that also we will know others as we are known. And we are known from within. We are known from the within. That's why Christ says, I search the heart and the mind. I search the heart and the mind. When he speaks about the heart, talking about the seat of life, that it means that God searches the consciousness and the mind. God searches the consciousness and the mind. So we will come into a place where we are able to search at the consciousness of man and we are able to search the mind of man in terms of intimacy and in terms of, uh, in terms of enhancing uh, intimacy and unity and in terms of coming into the knowledge of a person and coming into the knowledge of persons. So uh, that has to do with telepathy. And uh, this teaching is based on book 20. It's about uh, telepathy and telepathic unity. So, uh, telepathic unity, it's available at uh, Amazon.com. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, I've shared a couple of, of links uh, on my account. You can check them out as well and you get to see them. And as from next week, I'll be moving all of uh, my Facebook live teachings on my uh, on my page, uh, Integrated uh uh, integrated reads ILM. I'll be moving all of my teachings there. I'll be doing live from that particular place. So if you've not yet liked the page, uh, please like the page to keep up uh, so that you can be updated uh, in terms of the teachings. And also you can check out some teachings on my YouTube channel, Kahuo Gatoto, uh, in terms of the reality series as well. And also in terms of uh, mentioned about the um, a mantra that I did I, on, on quantum recreation and uh, quantum healing, uh, which is based on a book that uh, I published today, and the book is quantum, uh, quantum recreation and healing. Quantum recreation and healing, that means quantum recreation and quantum healing. So, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, so, <coughs> so I'll, be, I'll be sharing the link uh, sometime probably after this particular teaching, I'll be sharing the link. So God bless you so much, and I pray that you are sent into higher dimensions of consciousness within the being of Christ. Father, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for your, for your word, and um, I pray that we will come into a place where we will search your word. Lord, that we will enhance the telepathic channel between us and you. Oh, Simrasi Lebekoski Fishalabagande Breus. Am selegem de brado sufeko banate de lada rita na kaskala dige de skalados. Am brado sifeko li barado sifekos. Oh, spirit pray. Sham brada laga de bezanda brada nasute. Shada bagande brede skifeko skilada bagande broskalada. 
Amina sole de becos qui fima no brando si fecos calada baganda. Masobre de zevecos qui fica lida gas que le begori sanda bades. Amako zivecos kabakanda brede salida bagas. E chambrando le begende brosi fica li fica fosse fecos caliba. Ambre de zivecos qui la dagande brade le setes qui la gande brado scapa. Mando brada gadagande beste. Fekos ki la dagan de brada sete O samanan de brodis kapade Ah Shadi garan de gadagadagas Ais aladabagos ki As katakakwa Sambre de lege de baganda Bros ki fekos ka bagande Ashele began de brodis ki fekos ki le diganda Brado se fegoli gada masan de bredesia Shadi dadagando brede leges ki fi It's a prayer of ascension a prayer of ascension, a prayer of ascension. Eh, hey, sana kan lege de bos. Imana koski fi karatos kalabaganda. Shede begondi braskoti fe shatatatatia. Shambro de skete fe koski bilagande brede de dia shaladada dia shakakwa. Amaske fe koski. Shanda la bagande brada da dia. Shanda la dagadia. Shando brosko kwa. Shana la di da gada gada. Hey. Shambrosi kafa kwa. Shada da da dia. Rande de de dia. Shaga da gada gada skapa. Mando brada da 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 dia. Shadi gala gada ganda broski fe kos. Oh, Holy Ghost. Change the code, oh Lord. Change the code, oh Father. Change the code of our consciousness. Sabile gefe lekos. Aminano zabalive ko riba zande balaka. Shade bakonde beladosi. Aminane zavo labo ko riba zando brede ganda baladisketezi. Asaladabao. See, when God begins to alter our consciousness, that means that it begins to uh, change the code. Because we live based on our consciousness and the structure of our consciousness. The structure of our consciousness is the code of our life. I just begin to pray for you for an altering of the code of your life in the name of Jesus. Amresi fekos. Hey. Shamra nasadi latazi. Shabokos ki fikos ki labakande brosi. Sebelano ve. No vela no zive ko barados kapila nagande belato skife. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So also look out for uh, other programs during the week. I'll be doing some bit of teaching here and there. And also be doing uh, prayer. Uh, probably sometime coming next month we'll be doing prayer and also check out uh, my uh, my Facebook page uh, and also uh, my Facebook page to see some things there that I'll be projecting there as well and also my account uh, I'll be sharing some things in relation to the quant uh, in relation to quantum healing and quantum recreation may God bless you so much have a very tremendous and wonderful night